you ever wondered what the difference between investing and trading might be? Well, here to talk with me about this is Haley Tulitsky from Cook Capital. Haley, welcome. Hi there. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. So you recently wrote an article about this very topic for Retirement Daily. We're eager to have you walk us through it. Yep, absolutely. So you've probably been feeling like all the news lately has been surrounding the stock market as we've been reaching all-time highs. We've been experiencing a lot of short-term volatility. And now more than ever, individuals have direct access to different trading and investing platforms, which is really great. Um, most individuals have access to download an app on their phone, you create an account, and then you have instant access to the stock market, which is a really great benefit and an awesome opportunity. But it's really important that you not only understand the benefits, but also the risks, because trading and investing are two very different types of strategies when it comes to the stock market. So you want to make sure that you understand the difference and you're making the right choice for you. Right. So how do you define the differences between those two? Absolutely. So let's start with trading. Trading is what you've been hearing mostly about lately. Um, when you think of GameStop or Robinhood or all of these different things that are going on in the market, trading is the short-term buying and selling of stocks or other financial assets with the goal of getting a higher profit than if you were to hold that asset for the long term. Now, markets tend to be very volatile in the short term, so this can be pretty risky. So you want to make sure that you're not putting more money into the market for trading than you would be um, comfortable taking to like a casino. We say you, you're gambling when you're trading. So keep that in mind. And then investing, on the other hand, is gradually building wealth for the long term. So this time period could be years or decades. Often this is saving for retirement or with the goal of building generational wealth. So this can be comprised of many different investment strategies and account types, but your goal is long-term growth for whatever financial goals you might have. And you shouldn't be too concerned with short-term fluctuations in the market because you're not planning on touching that money for years or decades ahead. And you can combat that risk by diversification. And what that means is holding several different investments within your portfolio to help com combat concentration risk. Right. So if someone is inclined to uh, trade, I guess the old, the, the, the old term used to be speculating and then, mm -hmm. and then, and then it became day trading. And now I don't know what it's called, but if, <laughs> are there certain accounts where that kind of activity would be better suited? And, um, and then in terms of percent, I'd like to think of it as this is the mad money, right? The money that you can afford to lose and that maybe you don't want to put more than two or three or at most 5% of your, of that money at risk. Yeah, absolutely. So your percentage is going to differ depending on your current situation. Um, but before you ever start trading at all, you want to make sure, first of all, if you're receiving um, a workplace retirement plan, make sure you're getting your full employer match because that's essentially free money. You also want to make sure your emergency fund is fully funded. So that's typically three to six months of living expenses. And if you have any high interest debt, such as credit cards, that's typically over 20%. You want to make sure that that's paid off before you start doing this. But if you have all those goals taken care of and you're comfortable with your savings, then most people tend to open a taxable brokerage account. Um, for example, Robinhood, that's the only type of account that they offer. And you can invest that way. But keep in mind, when you're trading, there are different tax implications. So in a taxable brokerage account, you pay taxes when you sell an asset. And so if you sell that asset for a gain, if you've held that asset for less than a year, whatever your profit is, you'll have to pay ordinary income tax on that gain. If you've hold the asset for longer than a year, then you will be taxed at long-term capital gains rates. And that's a better rate. But just keep in mind, I think a lot of people don't realize that you do have to um, pay tax once you sell that asset. So, you know, tax time is coming. And if you haven't, if you've been trading and you haven't been keeping money on the side, you might be faced with a tax bill. So keep that in mind as well. Right. And of course, if you lose money, you can take a capital loss, but up to a certain amount. Yes, that is correct. Right. And so in some cases, would it be better not using a taxable account if you plan on uh, trading and speculating versus um, use, uh, using a tax advantage account? Yeah, absolutely. So you also have options. So you've got your workplace 401k. A lot of times they don't allow you to buy individual stocks in those types of accounts. But if you are under certain thresholds, you can contribute to an IRA or a Roth IRA. And with a retirement account, those are tax deferred accounts. So you do not pay taxes until you take money actually out of the account as a distribution. So you can trade all day long in those accounts and you won't realize any taxes until you actually pull the money out of that account. Mm. 
And the, I guess one more thing from my perspective is if you are going to be buying and selling individual stocks like GameStop or AMC or whatever might, uh, might fancy your, uh, your appetite, uh, <laughs> learning how to invest in, in an individual stock and actually doing some fundamental analysis, maybe some technical analysis, it's, it's not a bad learning lesson if, uh, if that's what you want to do, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's very important to do your research. And if, if you're confused by that, but you still want to invest in individual stocks, reach out to a financial advisor or a planner. They can help you create an account. They can help talk you to, through the process, help you do your research and help you make the right decisions. Because the last thing you want to do is invest a lot of money in one stock that you didn't do a lot of research on and then you could potentially lose. Right. So anything that we haven't touched upon that you'd like to uh, make mention of before we wrap up? Yeah, one last thing. I really want you to keep your investment strategy in mind and develop a plan because like we mentioned, the market can be very volatile in the short term. And so that make, may make you want to do crazy things. But if you've got a solid plan in place, you've got your investment strategy and you know what you're invested for, you're more likely to stay put and ride out those waves. So that's really important. All right, Haley, thanks ever so much for sharing your knowledge and wisdom about this uh, really important topic right now. You're very welcome.